Welcome to Concord Fires Awards Night. Appreciate you all attending. This is a special night for Concord Fire. It's always a very good gathering, good family time, uh, getting to see the retired personnel as long as active members. Appreciate you all being here tonight. So if you'd all please rise. Posting other colors. Forward, march. <laughs> Please now all join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Most performances of the national anthem. He's presented uh, three times now at Fenway Park, and he's on track to break another record this year for the for his pace of national anthems. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the We now have the Reverend Amelia Halstead from the First Congregational Church. She's going to lead us in the invocation. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Creator and sustainer, make each of us an instrument of your grace. Weave us into a community showing forth your power and tenderness. Bless us and our differences and undergird our courage to stand together. Bless all who are gathered here tonight and those whom we've brought in our hearts. Tonight we celebrate and lift up in prayer all those who are being awarded for their outstanding acts of service and bravery, as well as all those who put their lives on the line in service of others and community. We call on you today to gather us in your love, 
Lead us to better to know you and one another as we journey together. And let us always seek to breathe in your light so that we may show forth your love. Amen. I'd like to recognize some of those in attendance here tonight, Mr. Mayor Jim Boulay, some of our city council members, Councillor Hirschlag, Councillor Matson, some of the Medal of Valor winners, Tommy Nault, Ronnie Loud, Phil Terrell, several retirees here, including Al Brochu, Dave Hackett, Barb Clark, and Ronnie Loud. And I appreciate all our families being here. That's the most important part of this night, is our Concord Fire families. Uh, next session here, we do the line of duty death memorial presentation. And um, will Lieutenant Raud, Loud and um, Chris Dolloff please come forward? The fire service has a tradition of never forgetting our fallen brothers and sisters who have made the supreme sacrifice in the line of duty. We will now honor the six brave men who have unselfishly laid down their lives protecting the citizens of the Concord, city of Concord. Herman Ann Amos P. Turner, badge number 95, 54 years of age, assigned to Combination Company Number 1 at Central Fire Station. Died in the line of duty July 27, 1914, while operating the Box 9 Granite State Manufacturing Company on North State Street. Deputy Fire Chief Cornelius W. O'Brien, 60 years old, assigned to Central Fire Station, died in the line of duty March 5th, 1942. Chief of Department William T. Abney. 61 years of age, assigned to Central Fire Station. Died in the line of duty November 21st, 1943. Deputy Fire Chief Leo F. Blodgett assigned a shift commander, Central Fire Station. Died in the line of duty December 24, 1948, resulting in injuries incurred at Box 63, 73 Warren Street. Deputy Chief Russell J. Robinson, 49 years of age, Assigned as shift commander, Central Fire Station. Died in the line of duty September 27, 1973, resulting from injuries incurred at Box 2-42, 73 North State Street. Firefighter Stephen C. Cotter, 38 years old. Signed to Engine Company 5, Manor Fire Station. Died in the line of duty Janu June 18, 1979, resulting in injuries incurred at a still alarm, 56 Washington Street, Pentecost. Telegraph signal 5555. Five, five has long been used to signify a fire department line of duty death. We will now transmit one round of signal 5555 on the ceremonial bell, followed by a moment of silence in remembrance of our fallen brothers.
Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Chief of Department Dan Andrus to the stage. Thank you, Chief. This is the eighth time I have had the honor of being in this forum and welcoming you all to an evening of celebration and remembrance. Last year, the Concord Fire Department topped a new record for calls. We finally topped the 8,000 mark. Uh, for a couple of years, in the past eight years, we didn't top 7,000. But we're solidly over 8,000 calls this year. And tonight tells some of the story behind those numbers, the stories about saving lives, the compassion, and you get a little taste. I call it the trailer of a movie that runs 365 days a year. 21 times a day on the average, people are turning out. Concord firefighters are going into the streets and taking care of the people of the city. It occurs to me that ceremonies like this could never, ever be more important in our country and in our community. This is a divisive year full of rhetoric and division, and this is the kind of night that brings us together and shows the very best of what human beings are able to accomplish, to care for other human beings and to risk their lives for them. And I am so proud to have been a member of the fire service for almost 37 years. I want to keep my remarks brief. A much better speaker is waiting in the wings here, and uh, I want to just welcome you all and hope I get a chance to speak with all of you tonight before we go home, and thank you all for coming. Mayor Jim Boulay, would you please come up to the podium? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, one more time. Ready? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. There we go. All right. So this is the 10th time I've been back. and Thank you very much for having me. It really means a lot. I, I don't think you all understand, but it means a lot for the fact that you're willing to invite us and my fellow counselors and to participate in an evening like this. Uh, it really does mean a lot. Um, now, for the past several years, um, I've stood up here and I've announced someone in my family got sick, you were there to take care of them, and I am happy to say this year, no one in my family got sick. But it was always really nice to have you there in the wings in case something did happen. So if something goes wrong tonight, well, it'll probably be me, right? Um, let's afford to get one uh, thing of business out of the way, um, right immediately get this out of the way. Uh, now that uh, Derek Martell is in charge of training, we're going to increase the budget about a million dollars or so because you're going to need it. Come on. That was my shot of humor, huh? <laughs> Derek, did I get that right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, what I wanted to share with you tonight is I've got up here each year and we've talked about the honorees, and these are well-deserved honorees and the, and the uh, feats that they've um, taken place this year. Um, but what I wanted to share with you is what I hear from the community. And what I hear is it's not just what you do during the day when you work, but it's what you do after work, and it's how you participate in the community. Um, I happen to, my office happens to be in Cheers, so I happen to be uh, front and center when you do the Operation um, uh, Warm for the coats, uh, Operation Elf, I call it Operation Duckworth. Um, 
the fact that you participate in the uh, Boys and Girls Club auction, uh, the touch a truck uh, with the ice cream and such, the activities that go on downtown with the um, the tug of war or the truck tug of war or whatever it is, um, the boot drive that you do, I think you're getting the point. You participate so much in this community and it is noticed what you do. So it's not just how much we appreciate what you do during the day, but it's also what you do in your off time. And that, how you carry yourself and what you do in the community is so reflective, I think, of who we are in this city and who we are a city, who we have for members of our, our city uh, family, if you will. So I really wanted to say thank you personally. I want to say thank you on behalf of the city council, and I want to say thank you on behalf of this community and everything you do. It is, it is greatly noticed and it is greatly appreciated. So thank you so much. The uh, next segment we have is the uh, Captain Hank Ruby Memorial Scholarship Awards, sponsored by the Relief Association. I'd ask uh, Firefighter Chris Dolliff to come forward and present those awards to the recipients this year. Good evening, everybody. We uh, usually take three recipients. This year we, uh, we took the liberty to uh, have four recipients of the Scholarship Award. First one will be Mr. Corey Ackerson. He's the son of firefighter paramedic Robert Ackerson, and he'll be studying marine biology at the University of New England. If he's present, he can come on up. Ms. Kaylee Davis, daughter of firefighter Andrew Davis, be studying biomedical engineering at the University of Rochester. Mr. Bradley Keel, son of Lieutenant Ken Keel, studying nursing at the University of Southern Maine. And Ms. McCullough Terrell, daughter of firefighter Philip Terrell, and she'll be going to Keene State studying pre-med. Watch your stairs. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next segment we have is the Years of Service Awards that will be presented by Chief of Department Dan Andrews and Mayor Jim Belay. What we're going to do is call people up by groups um, according to the number of years of service that they have completed. We start with the members who have completed 10 years of service. This group includes firefighter Adam Morris, and as I call your name, please come up to the stage. Adam was appointed on March 20th, 2006. Firefighter paramedic Michael Langeal was appointed September 9th, 2005. Firefighter Jim Freitas was appointed September 9th, 2005. And a nice round of applause for these gentlemen. Our next group, uh, we'll let these members go back down and we'll call, um, as soon as they clear the stage, we will um, call several more who have completed 15 years of service. This group includes Lead Dispatcher Scott Bork, appointed February 18th, 2001. Paramedic Lieutenant Keith Mulholland, appointed January 26th, 2001. 
Firefighter Patrick Richardson appointed October 21st of 2000. Lieutenant Merle DeWitt appointed July 7th of 2000. Captain Derek Kelleher appointed July 7th of 2000. And Firefighter Christopher Johnson appointed July 7th of 2000. Now we turn to the members who have completed 20 years of service. There are five members in this group. Firefighter paramedic Stephen Lorenz appointed, appointed March 2nd, 1996. Captain Timothy Robinson appointed September 9th of 1995. Battalion Chief Sean Brown appointed September 9th of 1995. Firefighter Philip Terrell Jr. appointed September 9th of 1995 and Lieutenant David Dumas, also appointed September 9th of 1995. We do have one more member who has completed 25 years of service, Lieutenant Chris Andrews. I don't believe can be here this evening. Uh, Chris, are you out there? Um, he was appointed September 1st, 1990, even though he is absent, let's give him a round of applause for a, a quarter century of service. The next set we have tonight is the presentations of the 2015 Department Awards. And again, they'll be presented by Chief of Department Dan Andrus, assisted by Mayor Jim Boulay. Uh, would the Honor Guard escort retired Lieutenant Ronald Loud to the stage, please? Lieutenant Ronald Loud had a long and distinguished career as a member of the Concord Fire Department, serving the citizens of this city from 1974 until his retirement in 2008. In addition to a very long list of professional accomplishments, Lieutenant Loud also served as the Master of Ceremonies for the annual awards and recognition ceremony for many years. In this role, he continued doing what he had always done through his professional career, working quietly but diligently to make sure that things stayed on track and bringing a great sense of solemnity to the annual event. As always, as, as well, he was always a welcome presence for the Committee of Merit, where his history with the event and his willingness to share his expertise were highly valued by all the committee members, especially me. At the time of Lieutenant Lau's retirement, he was asked to remain as the Master of Ceremonies for just one more year to see the event through a transition to a new Master of Ceremonies. That one year turned into seven. In this department, its members and the citizens of this community have benefited from Lieutenant Lau's generosity and willingness to continue in this role. This 2015 awards ceremony marks the first time in many years that Lieutenant Lau is not at the podium. The department and I, are sad to see him fully retire, but deeply grateful to him for his years of service and the great sense of dedication that he continues to bring to us. The gracious assistance of Lieutenant Ronald Loud, retired, has brought credit to the Concord Fire Department and the City of Concord, and as such, we honor him with this Helping Hands Award. It's my pleasure to invite Ms. Cindy Tuttle, RN, nurse educator at Concord Hospital, to the stage. Since 2012, Ms. Cindy Tuttle has partnered with the Concord Fire Department to provide hands-free, hands-only CPR training to well over 1,000 participants. She has provided training at the annual Market Day celebration in 2012 and 2013, and the National Night Out celebrations for 2013, 14, and 15. Participants in this training have included current Governor Margaret Hassan and former Governor John Lynch. As a result of the efforts of Ms. Tuttle and Concord Fire Department members, over 1,000 people in this community are trained 
and ready to provide life-saving care in the event of a sudden cardiac arrest. Concord has the distinction of being designated as a heart-safe community because of the efforts of people like Ms. Tuttle. The gracious assistance of Ms. Cindy Tuttle has brought credit to the Concord Fire Department and the City of Concord. As such, we honor her with this Helping Hand Award. Would Dr. Gerald Bourgeois come to the stage, please? Several years ago, Mr. Gerald Bourgeois approached the administration of the Concord Fire Department with a proposal to write a history of the department. His proposal was eagerly received, and he began years of research into the department's history. He spent untold hours in the department museum, at the Concord Public Library, with retired members conducting exhaustive research, and probably many other things that we don't know about. During that time, he became a familiar and welcome presence in the stations and in fire headquarters, sharing interesting parts of our department's past, and a few meals too, I think. He also did a great deal to organize the department's collection of historical artifacts. Mr. Bourgeois was a featured presenter during the Concord 250 celebration at a well-attended Concord Chats gathering in fire headquarters. In December of 2015, Mr. Bush Bourgeois's book, Wherever Flames May Rage, was published. The response from the Concord community and the fire service has been remarkable. His book has stirred interest in the department's past, and it has given a reason for the entire city of Concord to be proud of its de fire department and its long tradition of service to this community. His work is an important contribution to the history of the city and will stand for many decades as the definitive history of the Concord Fire Department. The gracious assistance of Mr. Gerald Bourgeois has brought credit to the Concord Fire Department and the City of Concord. As such, we honor him with this Helping Hand Award. I invite the members of Engine Company 7 and Ambulance Company 5, Battalion 1, to the stage. Lieutenant Christopher Andrews, Firefighter David Courier, Firefighter Philip J. Terrell, Jr., Firefighter Paramedic John McBride, Firefighter Craig Coleman. On September 25th, 2015, at 1013 hours, Engine Company 7 and Ambulance Company 5 were dispatched to 8 Loudon Road on a still alarm request for medical aid for a report of an unconscious person. Engine 7 arrived four minutes later and found a patient in full cardiac arrest with CPR being performed by the staff of a medical facility. Ambulance 5 arrived and continued care with advanced life support measures, including defibrillation, and the patient regained a pulse and spontaneous respiration prior to arrival at Concord Hospital. Ambulance 5 was able to contact the hospital and arrange for the patient's direct admission to the cardiac catheterization unit. On September 29, 2015, four days later, the patient was discharged and walked out of the hospital with no after effects. The actions of the first arriving companies resulted in the successful resuscitation of this man under extremely stressful conditions, and both companies responded, responding worked together to provide the most efficient and effective care possible for this patient. The members of Engine Company 7 and Ambulance Company 5 were on that day indeed a credit to the Concord Fire Department and the City of Concord. They saved a life. As such, we honor them with this Emergency Medical Excellence Citation. From Concord Fire Alarm, I'd like to invite Lead Dispatcher John Marcel and Dispatcher Harold Palmer III to the stage. On May 4, 2015, at 1259 hours, the Concord Fire Department Communications Center received a report of a brush fire in the area of Marjorie Swope Park in West Concord. Lead Dispatcher John Marcel and Dispatcher Harold Palmer dispatched units to the scene. The incident eventually evolved into a six alarm response with resources from many capital area departments and the state of New Hampshire battling the fire. 
As the fire continued to rapidly develop, the incident commander requested helicopter air support for water drops and activation of the New Hampshire statewide fire mobilization plan task force system, bringing additional resources from throughout central New Hampshire to the scene. In total, the fire consumed over 60 acres, burning along Lakeview Drive from Long Pond Road to District No. 5 Road, with units operating on scene for almost 24 hours. Despite the fact that the fire came within 1,000 feet of homes, the incident was resolved with no damage to structures and no serious injuries. This was one of the largest brush fires experienced in Concord in many years, requiring extensive coordination to support both ground and aerial firefighting. Operations and, consistent vigil and constant vigilance to monitor and respond to incident communications, including the transmission of maydays from companies operating the scene, which were overrun by fire development. Remarkably, there was also a major third alarm brush fire in the town of Canterbury at the same time, multiplying the complexity that the communication center was facing, as lead dispatcher Marcel and dispatcher Palmer simultaneously handled multiple alarm fires in adjacent communities. Despite these challenges, lead dispatcher John Marcel and dispatcher Harold Palmer performed admirably, tracking unit status, relaying communications from the command post to field units, responding to requests for resources and providing timely and effective assistance for the resolution of this incident. In coordinating the response to the significant incident, Lead Dispatcher John Marcel and Dispatcher Harold Palmer III were, on that day, indeed a credit to the Concord Fire Department and to the City of Concord. And as such, we honor them with this unit citation. Would firefighter paramedic Keith Richardson step to the stage? Firefighter paramedic Keith Richardson was appointed to the Concord Fire Department on March 15, 2008. Throughout his career, firefighter paramedic Richardson has developed a reputation as a trustworthy firefighter and paramedic who makes the Concord Fire Department better every day. He is an outstanding firefighter and medical provider. He brings great knowledge and skill to the treatment of his patients and he has often been complimented for his calm demeanor and reassuring manner with patients and with their families. He is very well respected by the physicians and staff at Concord Hospital, where his advice and opinions are often sought out. His care for his patients goes far beyond taking care of their medical needs. In 2015, he treated a young woman who was homeless and went to great lengths to find temporary housing for her. He also serves as a preceptor for paramedic students teaching them not only technical skills, but the great trait of being a compassionate and concerned provider. He represents the department well to our citizens and helps with events such as market days and other community events, talking to citizens and representing well the image of the department and its members. He is constantly finding ways to contribute to the department and has completed a number of carpentry projects at the Heights Fire Station, including building two office workstations, repairing soffits, and building custom baseboards for the day room. He has also built a display case so the departmental awards can be prominently showcased for station tours. His enthusiasm very often inspires other department members to participate in these projects. He is a great example of knowledge and professional attitude and the department's core values. Firefighter paramedic Keith Richardson is indeed a credit to the Concord Fire Department and the City of Concord. As such, we honor him as the 2016 Firefighter of the Year. Keith, there's one more thing. Uh, the city manager called me at about 4 o'clock this afternoon and said that while he couldn't be here, he wanted to congratulate you on your achievement and wanted to inform you that eight hours of annual time will be added to your lead balance to take so you can enjoy it with your family. Thank you for everything. Nice. We're done. The next uh, segment that we're going to do is the multimedia show.
uh, by firefighter Dan Bickers and family. Closing ceremonies tonight, the Committee of Merit would like to thank those who assisted in tonight's ceremonies, the Concord Firefighters Relief Association for uh, supplying all the refreshments for the social hour, the Fire Explorer Plus 555 for their assistance with the logistics for tonight, the Compass Rose Floral Design for their, the flowers that they provided. Very nice, thank you. Captain Don McCulloch, from, retired from Rochester Fire, serving as our bagpipe. Mr. Al St. Louis doing the national anthem for us tonight, and members of the department and the community who volunteered their time to make this evening's ceremony a success. Thank you. Friends of the Audi and their continued support of the Concord Fire Department for the awards and recognition ceremony. 
particularly Mrs. Carol Bagan, the house manager, Jack Duncan, the house electrician, Ralph McKeenan, the house sound technician, and the rest of the staff of the city auditorium. Could you all please rise now for the benediction? As we depart from this place, may you know the peace that goes beyond understanding. May it bring you hope each and every day. And may your life be filled with joy and love as you be, as you are, as you are yet to be. Amen. Father God will now retire the colors. That concludes tonight's ceremony awards. I'd like to invite you all back to the reception hall. Thank you. <laughs>